Hi, in this video I'm going to make a large LED clock which uses 1.8 inch high digits for the hours and minutes and 0.8 inch for the seconds. It's powered by an 18 mega 3 to 8 controller and programmed in Arduino. It uses a real time clock to keep the time and the time is set via hours set and minute set buttons. This project is sponsored by PCBWare at PCBWare.com. PCBWare is an ideal board manufacturer for hobbyists and prototyping. Simply go to their website, click quote now, enter your details of your PCB. You've got various options of different solder mask colours, uh, inversion gold coating, acyl coating, etc. Click on calculate, it'll give you a price, including shipping, add it to your cart, and it will ask you to upload the Gerber file. They will then check it to make sure it's okay and then they'll come back with a final price they'll send you an email you pay for it and they'll send it to you in a very prompt and timely matter they also do 3d printing so you can get your 3d printed designs done by them as well they also do pcb assembly for all those that have passed prototyping stage and wish to make a pre-production run and don't want to go through the hassle of assembling the boards themselves okay so here's an overview of the circuit board. You've got hours and minutes displayed on 1.8 inch LED displays and the seconds on 0.8 inch LED displays. These are run by power shift registers in this case a TPIC 6B595N. The reason for that is these LED displays have three LED chips per segment with a forward voltage of around 6.3 volts. So 5 volts is insufficient, so these, in this case I'm running these from 12 volts with appropriate current limit resistors. There's no multiplex in here, just to make the circuit and the code simpler. And I prefer not to use multiplex in any way, because for my own reasons. Um, your microcontroller is an AT Mega 168P or a 328P, depending on what's available. Either will do, both the electrical the same and the code will fit into 16k of flash memory. Um, it shifts out via SPI into the first shift register here and then moves along the chain. And then there's a transistor here which switches the colons to dim. So that during the night you can dim the whole display. That is done by switching the output enable pin on and off via PWM which uh, dims the whole LED display and obviously this colons are actually wired direct to 12 volts via a current limit resistor and then the transistor switches another resistor in circuit to make it dimmer. Um, power circuit, you've got an input fuse, uh, reverse polarity protection diode and down here some test points so this is the prototype board and here some buttons for setting the time and then finally the real time clock module so if we look at the back of the board you can see the connections there for the buttons and the real time clock module this capacity here on the production boards will be on the front so i've changed the design of it it doesn't need to be that big these PCBs will be for sale on my website, which I'll link down below in the description and also at the end of the video. Now, so this is what we're going to put in. This is a box to house tea bags, and I bought this off eBay. There's no logos on it, and it's made out of bamboo wood. And let's see, it fits in there quite nicely. So, what we're going to do is remove these inserts with a Dremel and then uh, we we'll use that as a case. So that's the internal compartments removed. All that we need to do now is just put a bit of vinyl on the back of this glass here so you can't see the circuit board but yet the LED display will shine through. Uh, I've got some stick on window vinyl for that so we'll give that a go next. So that's the window tint applied. I'm going to see what it looks like with orange when it's on. If it looks a bit crappy, I'll uh, change that for light grey. Uh, at the moment, that box is now ready 
for the uh, electronics to go into. Okay, so here's an overview of the schematic. You've got your microcontroller here, which is connected to the shift registers via SPI. It controls a clock, latch and data pins, uh, and the output enable pin is connected to PWM pin for addressing the display brightness by pulsing the output enable pin on and off or having it permanently on for full brightness. This part of the circuit here controls the curl ones. When the LEDs are dim, current will flow from 5 volts. I said 12 in the previous part of the video, uh, so but that was incorrect, it's 5 volts. So it flows through the resistor, through the LEDs, through another resistor to ground. That gives about 2 milliamps of current to light the LEDs quite dimly. When the LEDs need to be bright, this transistor will switch on, which is controlled by a pin from the microcontroller, and that will bypass this 1K resistor boosting the current through the LEDs to around 12 milliamps. That switches on at 11 o'clock at night. Uh, the 1.8 inch LED displays have three LED chips per segment, as mentioned before, and they have a forward voltage of about 6.3 volts, hence the current limit resistors are 330 ohms here in this case. The decimal point has one LED chip, so that's 620 ohms. Um, move on to the 0.8 inch displays. They all have one LED segment, it's only one LED chip per segment, so the current limit resistors for them are all 620 ohms as well. These displays, as I said before, don't use multiplexing, so they're all connected to a regulated 12 volt supply by a fuse and the reverse polarity protection diode. These go to all the anodes of the common anode displays. And then when the shift register switches on, it will sink the current to ground through the current limiting resistors, etc. Your power circuit just simply consists of a 7805, which doesn't need a heatsink because current consumption of the chips are very small. So this switch with powers the shift register chips in the microcontroller. Uh, down here you've got connections to the RTC module and provision for power buttons. I'm only using three in my code. One button puts the clock into set time mode, and the other two buttons advance the hours and minutes. And then finally, when you want to come out of set time mode, you press the set time mode button again, and that will also zero the seconds, so you can set the clock quite accurately and synchronize it to an accurate time source. Uh, the rest of the circuit, a couple of quote resistors here for the clear pin on the, on the shift registers, that's there so that when the circuit powers on it, it prevents garbage from being displayed on the displays before the microcontroller boots. The other the 10k resistor is part of the reset circuit. And then you've got 100 mana for a capacity of that ground just to ensure the process the resets correctly. And those are your test points there. Uh, that's pretty much it the schematic. I'll move on to the code now. Okay, so onto the code. Right, first of all, right at the top of the program, we've got a description of how it works. Leftmost digit is zero. Data will be fed into the rightmost shift register first, so digit zero will shift out first. The clock will have three buttons, hour set, minute set, and enter exit set mode. To set the time, you press a set button, the clock will work a set time function, so that's the main loop. Then to exit, you press it again. And this will also zero the seconds right there, you'll also the real time clock. I'm not using the fourth button in this case. Uh, next bit, you've got the seven segment display mapping to the output pins on the shift register, which case output zero is segment G, output one, segment F. Last but not least, output seven is a decimal point. Next, we include our libraries, SBI required, because we're using SBI to transfer the data to the shift registers. Soft PWM for controlling the brightness of either output and label pin. Uh, and these two libraries are required for the real time clock. And finally, a button library for handling debouncing of the buttons. 
uh, next declare constants for your pins declare button pins for your button library set additional display value brightness to 4 the reason why I didn't set it to 5 is because the LED displays I use were extremely bright I've set the current limiting resistors to Gives the current around 20 milliamps, which is a bit too much. Um, if you're going to build this project yourself, you probably want to set that value to 5, because the current limiting resistors I've used on the updated schematic give about 15 milliamps of current rather than 20, as in the prototype. Uh, your next function sets the. Uh, sorry, your next line declares some values for your initial brightness, the initial set mode. Define your I2C addresses for your real time clock chip. And then you've got a couple of arrays which are the bit patterns which correspond to the actual numbers. So these are the outputs of the shift register. So for example, zero output zero is off, which corresponds to G as above. Uh, that wants to be off when all the other segments on, apart from the decimal point. Uh, next you've got another array with the decimal points on, which is basically the same thing, but all the decimal points are enabled as you can see here. Then we've got a third array for which displays a degree symbol on the YSC, which I haven't used in this particular version of code, but I've left it in there. Um, this bit of code runs at startup, which sets all the pins to outputs or inputs regardless as, as what's needed. It runs set brightness to set the initial value to 4, and then starts all the libraries. And then it then jumps to the main loop, which will run the clock display function, unless you press one of the set time button, which will jump get to later. So you just basically got if set mode equals 1, it will run set time, else it will run the clock display. Right, so this function here runs in the main loop and that basically detects if the set button has been pressed. So what that will display is SET on the display and blank digit 3 in the seconds display. And then it will then set the uh, set mode to true, which will force the main loop to run this function here. And it will jump down to here. This bit here will grab the current day and time from the real time clock, separate into the four digit number that's returned into individual digits using mod math. And then this bit of code here will determine which digit corresponds to hours, minutes, and seconds. And then the relevant information is then shifted up to the shift registers. And then, wow. The hour or minute buttons pressed. It will advance the hours or minutes and then write the value to the real time clock and it will sit there until you press the set time button which will then write the final values to the real time clock and also zero the seconds. This way you can synchronize your clock accurately with an external clock. So you wait till zero is displayed, zero seconds is displayed on your accurate clock and then press the set time button. That will then zero the seconds and return to the main clock display function. It will jump back up to this function here, which is the main function. Again, gets you down time from the real time clock, separates it into digits, and shifts the data out. Then you just got an if statement here that checks for 11 o'clock at night and sets the brightness to 1, curl lump into low. And then sets it back to bright again at seven o'clock in the morning. Um, and that's pretty much it for that. The final bit of the code here is a set bright function. Now, with the output level pin being active low, it needs to be reversed so that that 90 there does not mean 90% brightness, it means 90% off. So, brightness level one is the dimmest. So, 
that's actually backwards because if you put zero there it'd be bright so that basically means 90 percent off not 90 percent on with it being active low and your brightness level five is brightness zero which effectively turns off pwm and lights the leds permanently so they're at full brightness and that's pretty much it for the code it's pretty simple really all it does is in the main loop you just run the clock display function until you press one of the buttons that's literally all it does um, and then you've, got your, you've obviously got to keep con calling the set right just command here otherwise it won't remember the settings and then you say pwm that requires that's your pin pwm pwm pin 9 and then your brightness value to send to the pin um, yeah, that's uh, quite a simple bit of code, really. Uh, that's why I didn't want to use multiplexing, because in this bit here, you'd have to do the multiplexing. You'd have to send the display for digit 1, switch it off, send uh, send the data for digit 1, then send it off, set the data for digit 2 and switch it off, and then it, it just gets complicated. Um, it's just um, easy just to use direct uh, direct which drive them. I mean, it, yeah, it, it increases the component count of the resistors, but it's in a penny, so that doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much uh, it for the code. Yeah. Finally, here's the case fully assembled and a quick demo of it working. All that's required here is to switch all the holes in the case for the buttons. Uh, but you get an idea what it's going to look like. So to wrap this project up, it pretty much explains the circuit board, the schematic and the code, how to make this. Like I said before, I will be selling one or two completed units on eBay, including one of the prototypes. And also some blank PCBs in this with the prototypes, but I'll get some production ones made as well, which you can also buy. The link to my website is coming up at the end of the video. Thanks for watching.